Okay, welcome back. We're going to have a look at some intermolecular forces now. Um, if you haven't watched the video on molecular shapes and polarity, it could be a helpful little foundation for this one. Um, but we've gotten to having a look a bit of ta at the table of difference of electronegativities, um, which is a very important part of intermolecular forces because that determines the polarity of the molecules and the substances that we're looking at. So a quick review of that. If there's no difference in the, in the electronegativities of the two molecules, like oxygen bonded to oxygen, um, or even carbon bonded to sulfur, where they happen to have 2.5, um, exactly the same, then it's a non-polar covalent bond. What we're talking about there is the intramolecular force. Okay, So intra means within. So the intramolecular bond... <coughs> All right, here we go. Intra within the molecule is going to be a non-polar covalent bond. Okay, as soon as there's a difference, as I said, some schools take it as 0.4. Uh, for for the purposes of this, I'm going to consider a difference to be a difference. So from 0, 0,1 all the way up to about 2 or 1,9, again, schools differ. So I'm going to put 2 there for now. Um, now there is a difference between the two electronegativities, so one of the um, atoms is going to be wanting those electrons more than the other, therefore drawing it towards itself and becoming negative, we're going to have polarity resulting. So that is going to result in a polar covalent bond, and then as we mentioned, if it's bigger than that, if it's 2.1 higher or 2 higher depending where your cutoff is, um, the difference is so large that the one actually steals it away from the other, and we end up with an ionic bond. It talks about pizza and the fact that if you're both equally hungry, you have four slices each. This one, you give a little bit more to your hungry friend, and this is your starving friend, and you just give them the whole pizza, that kind of concept. So that's what's going on within the molecule, intramolecular um, bonds. What we're gonna have a look at now is the intermolecular forces, okay? This is not within, but between the molecules. Okay, so whereas, um, let me just scribble in the corner here, a little oxygen mo um, molecule bonded to two hydrogens, making a water molecule, will be polar, because that will end up becoming slightly negative and these slightly positive. We've looked at um, the polarity being, being uh, sorry, the bonds being a polar covalent bond. The intermolecular force is not that. It's in between that molecule and a potential neighbor coming past. So let's say another little uh, water molecule. The attraction of that minus to this plus, that is the intermolecular force right there. Okay, so let's have a look at what the names are and how do we categorize them and describe them and all that kind of stuff. Interestingly, um, they all were kind of named after originally van der Waals. So they all kind of loosely fall under the category of, of van der Waals forces. However, we do have some specific names for the stronger and weaker ones, so let's be more specific when you get to those zones. Let's maybe start with the stronger ones. That particular one that we've got there is a great example of a hydrogen bond. So hydrogen bonds form when H is bonded to either nitrogen or oxygen or fluorine. They're, they're the real hungry ones, 4 and 3.5 and 3 on the electronegativity scale. And uh, because of the size, they form really strong polarities and therefore can have a, a strong intermolecular force. So that would be an example of a hydrogen bond. You do get other... Um, strong bonds which are greater than one so let's put a, a, this threshold here of about 0.9 anything between one and two is, is a stronger polarity um, they don't have to be hydrogen bonds but these are the most common ones that you'll be you, that you'll be meeting in the, in the strong side of the family on the weak side of the family uh, we've got something we call London for forces or London dispersion forces they are just temporary um, uh, polarities that form. So it's, it's, it's when one molecule passes by another, uh, you've got the, the positive in the middle like that with the nu nucleus, 
the electrons of the one might just slightly repel these ones away, causing a slight, um, slightly polar, I'm going to emphasize it, something like that, um, which then attracts the, the electrons of the first one. So just as it passes by, but it's a very fleeting little temporary um, polarity that gets caused, and that results in a very tiny little inter, uh, intermolecular force, but nowhere near as strong as the others. Okay, so those, are, and once again, are beyond uh, 2.1, the, we end up with a crystal lattice structure where it's all just ionic, sodium plus chlorine minus, sodium plus chlorine minus, and so on. So the intermolecular for those, as it were, would also be ionic. Okay, so those are the, the, the one types of naming. Van der Waals force is kind of in the middle. Hydrogen bonds are stronger uh, type, and London dispersion force is a weaker type. But there's another set of naming um, that you need to know, and I think the easiest way to sort of diagrammatically look at this is if we consider non-polar substances and polar substances, just two little examples of each, and ionic substances, and how do they relate to each other. And I'm just going to use letters and, and abbreviations just to make life easier for ourselves, um, but you can get, get the idea. Now, when a polar substance, like water, is attracted to another polar substances, both of them are dipoles. A dipole being something that's got a plus side and a minus side, in other words, a polar molecule. So because they're both polar, they're both dipoles, the, 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 the bond that, that forms between them is simply a dipole-dipole. Now, it doesn't have to be a hydrogen bond. It can just be a van der Waals force, as long as there's polarity and one dipole is attracted to another, it's a dipole-dipole. Um, ionic to ionic, well, we've already talked about that. that that's ionic, or just ion-ion, I suppose you could, you, could, you could call it an ion-ion bond. This is the one where people sometimes get confused. confused. When you've got a, a non-polar substance attracted to another non-polar substance, we're looking at the London ones, but what we call it in this case, it doesn't have its own dipole. So what it is, it's an induced dipole. Both of them are, in fact, in this case. Induced dipole, I'm just going to put ID for the second one. Induced dipole, induced dipole. Okay. So that's when a substance is bonding within itself. But then you also get the cross-pollination kind of ones. So if we were to look at a polar substance being bonded to an ionic substance, for instance, well, that is simply an iron dipole because you've got the ion on one side uh, like sodium plus and a polar substance like water so this could be salt dissolving in water the what in fact happens I'm not going to draw you the whole diagram but the Na plus would be something like that a little, a little, a little ion in the middle and the plus attracts the oxygens and so the O's would kind of surround the, the Na+, plus, something like that. These are all the O's and the H's are the little other side, the Mickey Mouse ears, as it were. Um, so these, these little attractions here, those little forces, would in fact be iron dipole forces. Um, let's go across this way. Um, we've got a dipole with a non-polar substance which can only be induced. So in fact, it's a dipole-induced dipole, or you could put it the other way around, I guess, if you wanted. Dipole induced dipole. And then the last one would be a non-polar substance with an ionic substance, and that would be ion-induced dipole. So there's kind of six different categories there with the six different combinations and permutations that you've got going on there. Wherever you've got non-polar, it's induced dipole. Wherever you've got polar, it's dipole. And wherever you've got ion, ionic, it's ion. Okay. So um, that's a sort of a breakdown of the different types of uh, intermolecular forces that can be formed. I think uh, the best thing is to do is to hold a, do a whole bunch of examples and you'll start to see how the different ones fit together. Good luck. Have fun. Ciao.